We're not going anywhere. Five years later, we're still here and we're still angry and we're still coming at you. Gun violence is something that affects our country on an everyday basis. So we can't disappear. We're not going to allow them to continue to get away with not talking about this issue or approaching it with seriousness. It's a way to call them out and also to show their constituents what they truly believe on this issue if they're actually going to come and make an official stance on gun safety laws or if they're going to continue to cower away and not care about an issue that's killing 40,000 people across this country every single year and also an issue that is the number one cause of death for young people now in this country. I am a survivor of the shooting in Parkland, Florida at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. In the aftermath of the shooting, I started March for Our Lives with a bunch of my friends. We spent the month after the shooting organizing the large March for Our Lives event in Washington, D.C. We also had over 800 sibling marches all across the country. And here we are five years later, March for Our Lives is still at it, pushing for gun violence prevention laws because people keep dying in this country due to this preventable problem. My first introduction to gun violence was in December of 2005. My cousin, Vincent Avant, he was shot and killed down the street from his home. Uh, and the following year, April 4th, 2006, my brother, Terrell Bosley, he was shot and killed at church while getting ready for band riders so here in Chicago. And following both of their deaths, I felt inclined to get involved. I didn't want anyone else to go through the same pain that I felt from losing a cousin and a brother. So um, I joined a group here in Chicago called the Brave Youth Leaders, which was a violence prevention group going out, doing rallies, marches. And when the parking shoot happened, some of our members went down uh, and met with everyone in Parkland that was putting together the original rally in 2018. And at that rally, I spoke and I've been working with March ever since. In 2018, we had almost a million people show up to the march in Washington, D.C and hundreds of thousands more join us in those sibling marches around the country. And in the direct aftermath of those marches, over 50 gun laws changed on a state level. So we saw the direct effects of that in-person action. Constantly having the march is the frustrating part. Honestly, just understanding that we're going out, we're trying to create change, we're talking to the elected officials, we're getting different people put in office and yet we still have to deal with the same reality that classmates are dying as well as youth out in the street are dying. Lives are still being taken. While we're doing the work, while we're still marching, while we're still doing these things, not enough has changed. That's just incredibly frustrating. I have to still worry about my friends and family constantly being gunned down because those in office who we worked hard to get there are not moving fast enough. So I, I understand entirely the sense of hopelessness, the hurt, and with that, you just have to understand, you have to take the little wins that you get here and there. Even though it's really discouraging to see everyday shootings continue to happen, to see mass shootings continue to happen, to see our young kids be gunned down in schools, our apathy will only lead to more of that. So we need to keep pushing and we need to keep caring for the sake of protecting the community and protecting ourselves because this issue can truly affect anyone and everyone everywhere. Not one more! Not one more! Not one more! Not one more! To those people who think that marching or doing in-person protests are not effective, I'd encourage them to look at our history. There's an entire history of marches as a part of political struggle in this country, and those have led to sweeping changes in our political system. Our marches last year after the Uvalde shooting led to the Bipartisan Safer Community Act. Marching gets in the way and makes it so that elected officials quite literally can't avoid us. Understand that you belong in these spaces. You belong and you uh, should always voice what you're dealing with um, and your fears and everything going on because they have to listen. Don't be afraid to go out and try to be the change that you want to see.